My name is Anderson Wilder from the United States. I graduated in 2015, just back in December, and I'm the executive officer and crew engineer. Hi, my name is Carmen Felix. I'm from Mexico. I graduated from the master class 2010, and I'm the health and safety officer and journalist for this group. It takes a while to put the suit on and take the suit off, so. Yeah, so the suits are uh, pretty simple. Um, it tells the, the jumpsuit, the boots, the helmet. Uh, we have a backpack here, plastic tub, with fans and a battery built inside. Um, that is to give us airflow inside the helmet so you don't pass out from the heat or fog up your helmet. Um, we also have the radios uh, that we use to communicate amongst each other out on the EVAs and then also back to um, whoever is HAPCOM back in the HAB. Uh, we have a couple different kinds of backpacks. These are the two, I think these are two of the older ones. This is the one I prefer. And well, we are one week uh, since uh, since we arrived. It's the middle of the mission. We are here for 15 days, two weeks. Um, and well, we apply, uh, I think a year ago, more or less. And we got selected um, as a team. Uh, we submit a proposal uh, with experiments and so on. And uh, they, they the evaluation team from Mars Society uh, accept this proposal and well, we are here. We are going to take you uh, in a tour uh, through the habitat and I hope you enjoy it. I'm uh, Commander Renee Garithi and I graduated from ISU in 2011 and uh, I'm from Florida in the United States of America. So down here we have the first floor of our habitat which also serves as our workbench and our laboratory. We have everything you need for basic science experiments, including uh, life sciences, microbiology, chemistry, geology, earth sciences. We also have the capability to do robotics engineering and 3D printing, which we'll show you a little later. One really important factor about long duration space flight is food. How do we grow the food that we need? We can't always use the soil right away from a place that we're going. For example, the regolith, or the dirt on the moon is very toxic and it will take a lot to grow plants in it. Same thing on Mars. So what we're working towards is developing prototype hardware for growing plants in reduced gravity so we can use it in weightlessness on the way to Mars and once we get there, we do have a couple of plant experiments running right now. You can take a look. Um, so the last crew started sprouting these seedlings of beans and radishes using different uh, ratios of Martian soil that we collected outside the habitat, as well as earth soil. So this is one new prototype plant growth hardware called Oasis, and it's actually a passive watering uh, system. So you fill the reservoir with water down below, and due to capillary action, the water moves up into these seed pillows. And here's an example of what we're growing. These tiny seeds are Tokyo cabbage. You can take a look, the seeds aren't very big at all, but the cabbage grows quickly and it's quite nutritious. So this would be one uh, prime choice of food to be grown on long duration space flight missions. Down here, we've got an active watering system. And if you look below, there's a bag that's, that serves as the reservoir of water for the plants and there's solenoid pumps that pump the water actively up into the seed boxes. And we're also growing Tokyo cabbage here. One really cool project that we're doing this year at MDRS is Project Stardust. And anytime you see a shooting star, it's essentially a meteor or a space rock falling through the atmosphere. Um, now it heats up due to friction and it burns, but very, very small micrometeorites can come through the atmosphere and land here on Earth. So what we're doing here is we've collected loose topsoil from, you know, about a half an inch down um, from the surrounding hills around the hab, and we're going to uh, filter it down to very fine size, 
and we'll be able to image it here using a USB microscope. And the end product is something like this. We're looking for and hunting for these micrometeorites. And if you'll go with me upstairs, Carmen will give you a tour of our living space, our workspace, and then I'll show you how we eat on Mars. So to go upstairs, uh, we have this ladder here. Um, it's a little bit um, risky to uh, go up without paying attention, so you need to be very careful. So we are on the second floor. Here are the living quarters where we spend most of our time. Um, this area, we have six rooms for the crew members. They are really small. I will show you mine. So you have the bed here. It's a very basic and uh, small bed. Over here uh, is uh, where the bed is placed in the room next door. Uh, at, the, at the end here we have a desk. Um, I can put a chair there, but then it's uh, uh, it's not so comfortable because it's, it's very small. Uh, we have medicines and we have some basic equipment for like blood pressure and uh, if we hurt our arm or put ourselves uh, headaches and so on. Uh, for major emergencies, we have mission support and uh, whenever, if, I hope not, if something happens, we can contact them and they will give us instructions in it, how to react and what to do. So here we have a 3D printer. Uh, it's uh, one of the capabilities for engineering that we have here. Uh, we just set it up uh, when we arrive. And this is one of the tools uh, that we printed. This uh, was actually printed on board of the ISS um, to be used by the astronauts. This is one model that we just uh, did today. It's really cute rocket. And well, basically, if something uh, is necessary here and we don't have it, we have the capability to actually just print it and use it. The same as on Mars or in space uh, to save time. Here we have some dehydrated vegetables, soup mix, and my favorite, the staple of Mars, dehydrated potatoes. These are delicious, fried, boiled, that's about it. But no fertilizer required. My favorite part about waking up on Mars, besides the coffee, is the incredible view that we have of the Martian landscape. What you're seeing is a tunnel out to our obser observatory where we have a 14-inch Celestron telescope. We can image the night sky. Yeah, okay, so what we have right here is our, wa our in-hab water tank. This is where we get, when we turn on the faucet, this is where the water actually comes from. We're going to take you outside to check out the brand new greenhouse that just got built. So come on. So a couple of you guys had a question about um, the psychology experiment we're doing here. It's called sociomapping. It was run in last year's mission and, in all, and also in the Mars 500 mission, which you've probably heard about in class, and if not, ask one of the teachers. Um, it's pretty much it is taking, a, you take a survey, all the crew members take a survey, and then they will rate how they are interacting with the other crew members, and then that will be, then the computer software turns that into a, um, a graphical 
um, database and you, you can see um, how close how closely related and it, in tune with each other each of the crew members are. Um, since there's only three of us, I'm not quite sure how that data is going to look compared to the normal that they try to look for at least seven plus of people per group, but you know, it, it's more data points to use. So. so I think that's about it. We have a really bad storm coming, so we're going to head back into the habitat and hopefully we won't have to scrub our mission and we won't leave Anderson behind. Yeah, I'd be okay with that. <laughs> So Anderson, what did you think of the Martian? First off, I'll say welcome to my favorite place in the half, next to the propane heater. Um, so in regards to the Martian, I love the movie. It was a great Hollywood movie. Did not do the book justice. Did not go into the detail on uh, a lot of the things that the book did, which is unfortunate, but again, they had to do, do it for Hollywood, so. Hello. My opinion, I really like the movie, I enjoy it a lot. Uh, something that is not accurate um, that I can say is that you don't see him going through a psychological breakdown. Imagine just the stress and the impact uh, that can have uh, on a human being uh, just being in a different planet completely alone. And so there are a lot of uh, issues that uh, they don't really uh, show in a, in a realistic way. So one fact that wouldn't be quite feasible if you actually were on Mars was to bring the Martian regolith, the dirt, right into the hab with you and grow plants in it. It's very toxic, it's something you don't want to breathe, and you definitely would not be able to grow plants in it without first doing something to make it more usable for our Earth-based plants. Other than that, I saw the movie in theater two or three times, loved the book. I wish they would have included more scenes from the book. But uh, I think tonight we're going to have a team building activity and go upstairs and watch The Martian on DVD. Bye!